it just hit me that at some point in human history, a white man learned that he could achieve through violence, things he was unable to achieve through merit. And the entirety of modern civilization fails to be a meritocracy because they can't compete where they don't compare. I would like to be yeeted off the planet. I, I, the f and she's right. Europe didn't have, Europe had nothing that we wanted. In fact, Europe didn't have anything that any of the colonized countries that they went to wanted. We did not need from them. Nothing. Nothing. Many of the countries that Europe colonized had been trading globally before they got there. Peacefully, in fact. Many of these countries had indentured servitude, which had models and practices about it, and you could work your way out of it. So, we didn't need shit from them. And the only way that they've gotten to where they are now as a global superpower is by keeping those colonized countries enslaved and using those resources to trade with everywhere else. In and of themselves, Europe isn't shit. Useless. So there is this African brother on TikTok and whenever he mentions Europe in his video, he always follows with the description that old, cold and wet place. Brother is always like, that's all there is to Europe. And whenever I hear him say it, it always makes me laugh. So I thought I'd share with you guys as well. But anyways, back to today's topic. If you want to know who needed who historically, look at their museums. I think it's very simple because for me, their museums literally tells us everything we need to know about history. Take a look at the British Museum, for example, and there is absolutely nothing British about that museum. Everything in the British Museum is from Africa, from Asia, from the Americas. I often hear people say, oh, we are living in modern times now, colonization ended, even though colonization really never ended. It was rebranded, but, you know, story for another day. But, you know, we hear people say, oh, colonization has ended. Why can't they just give back this artifact to the people they stole them from? It's very simple why they are finding it hard to give back these artifacts. They know deep down that they have nothing to offer. So these artifacts are things that they hold on to because they know that if they should give them back to the people they took them from, they have nothing more to show for themselves. Because not only are they trophies to them, they are like evidence of their conquest, they are also things that they cannot let go of because they profit off of them. They are things that they cannot let go of because they have nothing to replace those things with. They have nothing to show for themselves, literally. So they bank on things that belong to other people. Imagine the British Museum, which in my humble opinion is a crime scene, decides to give back the stolen artifacts that they have in the British Museum. Do you know how empty the British Museum would be? That place would echo in a way that nowhere else have ever echoed before because of how empty it would be after they've returned those artifacts to the original owners inside the african section of the vatican museum what you will see in this video today is very astonishing this section of the museum contains the catholic church collections from africa over centuries the artworks in this place tells a beautiful story of the cultures and religions of the African tribe untainted. On a closer look you will notice that most of these arts were collected between the 17th and 21st century, meaning that they were probably stolen or taken by force.
Do you want to see more videos I took in this place? Follow for more. You know, the more I look into history, the more I wonder when civilizations in Africa and in Asia and in the Americas were doing their thing, what were the Europeans doing? Oh, I know. They were sitting their asses in Europe, just doing nothing all day. Most likely going on for weeks without baiting. Just amassing those diseases and plagues and thinking about how they're going to come down, go to people's places and spread those diseases and kill off populations and then take credits for their civilization and colonize and enslave them. Classic Equinsu moves. Black people are an obsession. The world is obsessed with us. It was never hate. It's always been envy. It's always been envy. It was never hate. We thought it was hate this whole time. They don't hate us. They envy us. They want everything we have. They want to be us. They want our demeanor, our swag, our lingo, our abilities, our intellectuality. They, 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 they want our brain power. Believe it or not, they've convinced us that black people can't read. Black people usually are the dumber ones in the classroom, whatever the case may be. But honestly, that's not true. And a lot of black people have, have gone on to believe that. So, you know, when you believe that, you don't even try sometimes. That's a whole other conversation. But they've puts certain things not only in black people's minds, but in other people of color's minds around the world. So not only do white people envy us, but other people of color envy us, and then they pass it off as hate, and they discriminate against us and all of that, but do everything that we do. They want to talk like us, they want to walk like us, dance like us, copy our music style, K-pop, you get what I'm saying? They And, 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 and don't get me wrong, I don't, I don't have any hate for none of these people, but my thing is, it's so weird that y'all act like we're the scum of the earth but copy our every single move from the way we speak to music, to fashion, to everything. The fashion world, these big fashion houses, guess where they get their inspiration from? The ghetto, the hood, the streets, hip hop. You get what I'm saying? They get it from all types of black people from every end of the spectrum. They, they, don't, they don't actually hate us. Because when you hate somebody and you feel like you're better than somebody or a group of people, you don't copy what they do. You don't mimic what they do. You get what I'm saying? You don't you don't even engage in stuff that's of their culture, of their lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's not hate, it's envy. Y'all y'all ever been in school, and especially when you was younger, and kids would like like kids would be like, I, well, I don't like you, or I don't like her because, and they never have a real explanation. They just say because, and then now now y'all fighting and y'all beefing in elementary school, middle school, for no reason. When really the basis of that is envy. They want they want something you have. They want to be you. They want to look like you. Whatever the case may be. On a larger scale. That's the rest of the world to black people. And more specifically, I'm going to be honest, more specifically, black Americans. That may be a whole nother conversation. And don't get me wrong, black Americans obviously get a lot of stuff directly from Africa. I mean, because we're originally from Africa, so our ways are, we're literally African-American, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's African-based regardless, right? But you know what? That's a whole other TikTok. The message I want to send to all my fellow black people out there is... If you ever feel the effects of racism and, you, and it kind of gets into your head and makes you subconsciously feel like you are less than or you feel like, damn, I'm hated because I'm black or, you know, me and my people are hated or looked down on or, or look, look, looked at like we're just the scum of the earth and we're just bad people by nature or something. Remember that it's the total opposite. These people worship us. Honestly, they do. They fake like they don't. They pretend like they hate us, but they copy everything we do. They worship us. They want to be us. We lead them. We lead the pack. We lead the trend in everything. You get what I'm saying? So remember to remember to walk with your head high. I'm not trying to get deep in all that, but, but, but to be honest, I need y'all to remember to walk with your head high as a black person because you literally are what everybody wants to be. You get what I'm saying? And the, 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 the proof is online. The proof is out in the world. The proof is in everyday life. I'm not just making this shit up. They want to be us. So don't let them get in your head and make them think that they think they're better than you because they don't think that they know they're not better than you. But they want you to think that. So you don't so you don't know who you are and what you have and what we are as black people. You get what I'm saying? But he is absolutely correct. The primary emotion they have towards us is jealousy and envy. And they're expressing that through hate. He goes to mention that he's referencing that you can see their envy in just how they their trends. All their trends is inspired by us. M the music, they're inspired by us. I'm sorry, I have hiccups. Um, the way they dress is inspired by us. I didn't learn this information until my mid-20s when I was on my journey because majority of my life, I would say for the first 20 years of my life, I was around predominantly white people. 
damn near, I would say about 90% of anybody that was around me between shit <laughs> since birth up until my first couple of years of college, they were white people. Now, I wasn't fortunate enough to have a parent to raise me to be conscious about my blackness. As a matter of fact, both my parents, in my mind, they basically wanted me to be a, just a, a coon, essentially. So when you're a high schooler and you're around these white kids and they look down on you, right, and then still copy the things that you do, it just didn't make any fucking sense. So in my mid-20s, I started doing my own little research and I came across two books that helped me understand the psyche of the European mindset. <laughs> and I'm talking about the, the conquering mindset of the European and these two books, when I tell you that when you read these two books in conjunction to each other, you do your own like separate, you know, research and study and stuff like that. These two books right here, there's no way you can be a coon after reading these two books. Now, this book right here, this is a tough read. OK, this is a tough read if you are a, a black person that respects the American education system, which I know most black people don't. But there are a, a sector of black people out there who swear by the American um, education system. This right here debunks all of that. So everything that you thought was real in terms of philosophy, psychology, even sociology of how we interact with each other and how we view our society was stolen from us. You know what I'm saying? So this book right here helped me with that. Now, this book right here, this shit right here. This shit right here, this, this needs to be in every black person's home. Honestly, after read, after reading this, you can't possibly be a coon. You can't, it's, it's mentally impossible. That book illustrates how truly envious they were down to the point where they stripped you of everything. I don't know, I'm not talking about just religion. They stripped you of everything because they wanted it. And you know what's funny? Stolen Legacy. I'm going to do a video on Stolen Legacy and how fucking funny that shit is but it's true 